In this lesson, we're going to look at how to convert between mass and moles. Okay, so if you remember, molar mass had the units grams per mole. Hey, it has a grams over moles. It's going to allow us to convert between grams and moles because it has a, it's a fraction that relates grams to moles. Um, so if you remember H2O, if I look up on the periodic table, there's two hydrogens, they each weigh one um, gram per mole, and there's one oxygen, which weighs 16. If I add that up, it has a molar mass of 18 grams per mole. So what I can do is I can use this as a conversion factor. If let's say I started with grams, okay, then I can put the 18 grams on the bottom, I could put one mole on top, and I can convert between grams and moles. Or if I started with moles, if I multiplied by 18 grams over one mole, the moles would cancel out and I'd be left with grams. So I'm going to make this conversion factor one of two ways. First of all, Notice that the value for molar mass, like this 18, notice that I always keep it next to the grams or the G, okay, in the conversion factor. And notice next to moles, I always have a 1 because, for instance, for H2O, it weighs 18 grams for every 1 mole. These two values are equivalent. 1 mole weighs 18 grams. Those are equivalent. They just have different units. So I'm going to be able to use molar mass as a conversion factor between grams and moles. And where that 18 goes, on top or bottom, is going to depend on what unit I start with. But again, you're, it's always going to be your molar mass next to grams and one next to your moles in your conversion factor. So let's take a look at this problem. Calculate the number of grams in 0.455 moles of CaCO3. Okay, so... Notice that this is the value I'm starting with. I'm going to put my unit, uh, my number, and I'm next to it I'm going to put a unit. So make sure that next to your numbers you all have units. So if I think about this, I have MOL, I have moles to start with. I want a conversion factor that has moles in the bottom so that they cancel out and has grams in the top so that I'm left with grams. So what has units of grams per mole? Oh, that should remind me. This is molar mass. I need the molar mass as my conversion factor. So we're going to end up multiplying by the molar mass. So in my calculator or somewhere on the side, I should find the molar mass for CaCO3. There's one calcium, weighs about 40.1 um, grams per mole. There's one carbon, weighs 12, has an atomic mass of 12, and O3. There's three O's that are 16. If I add that up, I get about 100.1 grams per mole. Remember that this value for molar mass, that's always going to go next to the G, the grams in your conversion factor, because that's how many grams are in, and we put a 1 next to the mole. That's how many grams are in one mole. Okay, so here's my conversion factor for calcium carbonate to go between moles and grams. Again, I want the one mole on the bottom. I want 100.1 grams on top. This is just my molar mass for this molecule. There's 100.1 grams for every one mole. Moles cancel out, and all I'm doing is doing that 0.455 times 100.1, and I get about 45.5 grams. When you're doing this, if you want to think about sig figs, it might be helpful. If I have three significant figures to start with, make sure your answer is around three sig figs. Okay? Um, let's look at this example. Calculate the number of grams in 2.59 moles of CCL4. So always write the number that you're starting with with its unit. I'm starting with 2.59 moles. And let's think about, I want to convert this into grams. So what do I need in my conversion factor? I want moles on the bottom so it cancels out. I want grams on top so that that's what's left behind. Anytime I'm converting between grams and moles, I need to calculate the molar mass because that's going to be in my conversion factor. And the number that I get is going to go next to grams, and I'm just going to leave a 1 next to mol. Even if you don't want to put any number next to mole, that's fine, but there should be no nothing that you're essentially going to be dividing by in this case. So if I get CCL4, there's one carbon. Weighs, has an atomic mass of 12, 4 chlorines, 35.5, add it up, I get 154. This number, this value is going to go next to the G, and it's going to have a 1 next to mole, because for CCL4, it weighs 154 grams for every 1 mole. 1 mole weighs 154.0 grams. And I'm just multiplying these two numbers, dividing by 1, which is like not doing anything. Moles cancel out, and I'm left with grams. This is using dimensional analysis to convert between grams and moles, and my conversion factor is my molar mass, which somewhere on the side I'm probably going to have to calculate in my problem. Okay, 
calculate the number of moles in 62.70 grams of CuSO3. Okay, so I'm starting with grams now. Let's think about my conversion factor. I want something that has grams on the bottom so they cancel, and I want moles on top so that it's left behind. Still, anytime I'm going between grams and moles, um, I need something with the units grams over moles or moles over grams. I'm using the molar mass, okay? So in this case, I'm just going to end up essentially dividing by the molar mass. To get the molar mass, there's one copper, there's one sulfur, there's three oxygens. Multiply those by their molar masses, add them up, and get 143.6 grams per mole. This value, this 143.6, and again, you might have a slightly different number depending how you round, um, that's going to go next to the grams in my conversion factor. So that's going to go on the bottom, and one is going to go next to the moles because one mole weighs 143.6 grams for this particular compound. Notice all these different compounds have different molar masses. I have to calculate it. It's not all going to be the same. So in this case, I'm doing 62.7 times 1, which is like not doing anything, and divide it by 143.6. Grams cancel out, and I'm left with units moles, and I've now successfully converted grams into moles.